Hi! So I'm going to give you guys a little kind of round, round the world tour of what we currently have here at Infocom. So we'll start over with our hazers. So we brought um, our two, two of our professional series hazers. So we have our HT6 hazer. The great part about this hazer, it already comes in the row case. You have your hanging bracket up here on top. It's a great little hazer because it's small, it's compact, it's able to travel on the road if you have any type of traveling productions. It does have the self-clean mode. You have, you know, a great fan in it so you can go anywhere from zero to a hundred percent. Your bottle is fully locked in here so it can, it can be any which way direction you want it to be and your bottle is good to go. So the great part is you power it down, you put it in that self-clean mode, you throw it back in a road case, it's ready to go. Same thing with our H4 hazer. It it doesn't have the road case on it, but you still have your self clean up. It's more for a, some of those more permanent installs. It's a great hazer. It pumps out a ton of haze. This is fully, you know, you can change this. So you're going to angle your haze however you want it to go. So it can go up, down, anything like that. I won't change it now. But once again, in the back here, you do have where your haze juice is locked in so you can lock it in back there everything is all connected there so these are two of our hazers we offer in our line these are most what they do for production so over here we do have our fobbles machine so with the fobbles machine oh and he's showing our new product the instant snow but do you want to hit the fobbles machine for me yeah sorry no you're good so bubbles machine, Bob, bubbles, everything is great with that. You have your LED lights on the on the front here. So it's black light, RBGW plus UV. It can be a bubbler, it can be a fogger, and it can be a fog bubbler. So yeah. Here's going to be our new product, the instant snow. So all it is is it starts off in a granular form. You add water and then you make snow. So. So here's going to be two of our upshots. So we have first our Hyperion D6 upshot. You have your full RGBW plus UV lights up top. It's one of those you buy just for the heck of it. It's a dual light, so that way you can have dual colors on it. Yep. And then we're going to have our Hyperion SJ8. So this is going to be the granddaddy of all upshots. And it, kind of looks like a CO2 blast because it has a full air compressor built right on into the machine. You do have the double lights here, so you have your double LED lights with the compressor inside. It also has a vacuum, so as soon as the fluid finishes, it pulls any remaining fluid back down and in, into the line so you get auto cutoff. Here's going to be probably one of our most popular machines, and this is going to be our Poseidon A2. The reason that it is the most one of the most popular machines is because it gives you the ground fog effect here, but it's actually no refrigeration, no CO2. It's all just water atomization, so it's water and fog fluid, so it keeps everything low. Particular is it like distilled water that you guys use? Nope. Regular top. Yep. So you have your water, your fluid chamber up top. It atomizes everything down here in the bottom and keeps everything low to the ground. Yeah. So we'll go to our snow machines. You know, we, we have a, we have a couple, and they're not popular. But when they are, now we need like ten. Ten. 15, yep. 20 million, you know, we're like, oh, God. Yeah. So, when it gets to be snow season. Right. So this one's going to be our perf like our top professional series one. Okay. It uses the least amount of. It gives the most output with the least amount of fluid consumption. This is only at twenty percent, but 
it gives you a lot of just 20. I mean, that's 30% there. And you're getting a good blizzard at 30%. Has an awesome fan behind it. There's no extra fan under that. That's just... Yeah. And this is going to be... smaller unit still has a great fan just doesn't have as much of the throw behind it but it's great for you know you can put it up high it's great for those productions everything like that it still has the full ZMX address in the back everything there it just runs on the on the remote and then we have our foggers so this is going to be our 1500 Pro, so it has the full LED panel here on the back. Has amazing CFM output. All your DMX. Free pin, five pin there on the back. Yeah. And here's going to be the granddaddy. Fifteen hundred pro, eighteen hundred pro. So you have some serious output behind them. They also run for a pretty. They'll let them run for a pretty long amount of time. Plus, if you were to back off and throw it like on a timer, it has really quick warm up. So, it, I mean, that ran. It was down for a few seconds, and then it's able to run again. So. And you are able to get them into a continuous mode. You just back your fog volume off and you, and then you're pretty good to go. But I mean, you're having a quick turnaround there with that. So that's. Awesome. All right. That's, <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Infocom 2022. My name is Edgar Burnell here in the ADJ booth. Um, here we're showing a couple of new products that we're introducing and this is part of, if you're familiar with, our Encore series of fixtures. So we do PARs, bars, and panels. And what you're seeing here is three of our models. I'll start down the end there. That is our Encore Lime Par 18 IP. So yes, these are IP65. So great color mixing with the IP65 housing. Doesn't just mean outdoor use. If you're using these inside, there are no fans. So you're talking about extremely quiet fixtures that be, can be good for any type of application where you need quiet operation. So what we did with these, they might look like our traditional PARs, but these are high powered with 20 watt LED per cell. And on top of that, what we did is RGB plus lime. And if you're not familiar with how lime works, it's gonna give you better whites from warm white to cool white. And of course with RGB, you get all those brilliant colors that you can get by achieving mixing with those. So we have three different flavors. You have our 18, our 12, our seven. We just introduced the five. We don't have it here. And then this is our panel. Now what's neat about these, they're gonna have optional lenses and the lenses are gonna have anything from 40 degrees, 60 degree coverage, all the way up to 100 degree coverage and even light shaping filters. I don't think I have one of them here, but the way that works, if you wanted to get a more directional beam out of a PAR, you can actually get a linear effect, slide it around, so you can use it for an application where you need that. So those are gonna be available as parts or accessories in addition to the Encore line PARs. So there they are. For more information, you could always check us out at adj.com. Hey guys, welcome to Infocom 2022 here at the ADJ booth. My name is Edgar Burnell, and here is one of our newer fixtures that we're showing. This is called our Focus Flex. This is an RGBW 20 watt per cell moving head that does feature a five to 45 degree zoom range. This fixture is so compact, a great addition to when you're looking for a beam wash fixture where you might not have a lot of room or because of its affordable cost, something that you can get many of to get this really quick moving head beam wash effect. Now with the Focus Flex, again, it's RGBW. You do have controllability to control each cell so you get some really dazzling eye candy effects. And then you'll notice you got a little green button there that says wireless indicator. This is gonna have our Wi-Fi protocol 
already integrated. So if you just wanted to run power to these units and one wireless DMX, you're able to do that with the Focus Flex. So once again, just a great addition for our uh, Focus series that has now beam and wash with 20 watt cells with very, very fast zoom and movement. Of course, for more information, you can always check out ADJ.com. Hi there, and welcome to Infocom 2022 here at the ADJ booth. My name is Edgar Burnell. And I'm excited to tell you guys about a new series of fixtures uh, that we're introducing. So right next to me, what looks like maybe a Focus Spot 4Z or 5Z, this is now our Hydro Spot 1. If you're familiar with the Hydro series, those are the IP65 rated moving heads that we offer. For the longest time, we've had beams and washes that have done great, but we're finally introducing spots to that mix. And what's great about this, there's really nothing like the Hydro Spot 1 where you have a 200 watt, 10,000 lumen moving head that has a 12 to 23 degree zoom range. You have two frosts on here. So now you're not just having just a spot, you have a wash moving head. This has two color wheels. On one of the wheels, you'll have your CTO and your CTB. You have a rotating global wheel where with an outdoor rated moving head, you can actually use customized gobos. So now you can have something that's for temporary outdoor use, not having to worry about the elements of weather, you're gonna be protected with the Hydro Series. So with the Hydro Spot 1, once again, 200 watts, you get rotating gobo wheel, two color wheels, two frosts, all out of this compact moving head. And of course, with the Hydro Series, we do have a Hydro Spot 2, where you jump up to 330 watts, closer to 15,000 lumens, and the big brother in the series is the Hydro Profile, which is a 660 watt moving head and has framing shutters pushing 25,000 lumens. So that really completes our Hydro series. And I thought it was really important to show you guys the Hydro Spot 1, the great addition to the line. So of course, for more information, you can always check out ADJ.com. Hey guys, Eric Mueller here, Chevy Professional. Uh, we're showing some stuff at Infocom 2022. Uh, Shove a professional this year. Uh, we have two new products. One of them uh, is now the Rogue Outcast 1L Beam. Uh, this is now uh, a beam fixture uh, that includes a 140 watt cool white LED uh, instead of an arc source. Uh, it also uh, provides a color wheel. Uh, we provide a wheel that has both rotating. Uh, and indexable and interchangeable gobos as well as fixed gobos on one wheel. It's a pretty neat si uh, system. Uh, we also include the basics, the frost, the focus, strobing. Biggest thing about this guy being outcast is it is IP65 rated, so you can use it outside. Hey guys, Eric Mueller again. Uh, second product we have this year, uh, brand new, uh, is the now Rogue. This is the Outcast 2 X-Wash. Okay, so very popular, the Rogue R2 X-Wash. Now we have it IP rated. Nothing else has changed except for the housing. It's about one pound heavier. Uh, aluminum die cast uh, on, the, uh, on the housing, very light. Like I was saying, one pound heavier than the original Rogue R2 X-Wash. So now, if you want an R2 X wash outdoors or even indoors, you have the IP65 on that. 25 watt LEDs, there's 19 of them. Zoom range is around 5 to 49 degrees. Uh, fully uh, segment mappable, not fully pixel mappable, but segment ma uh, mappable. Uh, great unit again, RGBW, 25 watt, 19 of them. Uh, great product, very light product. Okay, number three fixture, uh, Infocom 2020, 2022. Uh, this is the Rev E3 IP. Uh, we do have uh, the Rev E3, that is an indoor unit. Uh, it revolves around a uh, RGB, amber, and mint uh, LED. Uh, very high output uh, with this unit, unlike the E910 uh, that you may have seen in the past uh, from Ovation. Uh, the E910 is RGB, amber, and lime. Uh, with this unit, uh, we have RGB, amber, and mint. The mint uh, allowing for a more pristine uh, variable variation of white. Uh, and with the output of this guy, uh, where the 910 and variable white was a little on the, uh, on the low side output-wise, 
the E3, uh, the Rev E3 takes care of that. And variable white, we're at around 700 watt output. And then you have the uh, colors, the red, green, and blue, uh, that uh, obviously are well over uh, any output you need. Uh, you could get uh, 80, 90 foot throws with this guy, no problem. Uh, this is IP. If you notice uh, in my other two, uh, um, uh, in my other two demos, uh, IP is uh, tending to be a theme here. Uh, everything that we're doing uh, at the show this year uh, is IP rated. Uh, that will uh, probably be consistent uh, throughout the year. We have quite a few products coming out, and you'll see IP uh, consistent throughout. Uh, just makes sense to have something that can be both indoor and outdoor at the same time. Uh, Revy 3 IP. Hi, I'm Samantha Potter, and I'm with Allen and Heath USA. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the AHM series processors. So we have three versions. We've got, if you come down here, we've got an AHM 64, an AHM 32, and an AHM 16. We've had the 64 out for a couple of years. We really wanted to develop the technology uh, and suit it. Basically, if what what would happen if we took all of the things we've learned in console land with our FPGAs? and moved it into the integration space. That is what this brainchild is. So after we successfully launched that, we decided to start working on scaling the products to make it really affordable and get it into even more areas. So that's why we have the 32 and the 16. Again, we've got some nice tactile controls. I can scroll through here. I even have some uh, source selectors here to go through presets. So if it was a house of worship, for instance, I could just give them a, maybe a full service, a stream setup, or a simple setup. I can select it and have full audio control. That way it's as easy as possible to let people have access to the AV system without hurting themselves because sometimes that happens to the best of us. So we've got those. Uh, if we come up here, I can show you on this giant television screen behind me, I have System Manager. This is how we actually get into it, program it, access all of the processing that we can get into. So we'll go back over here. So you'll see it's a horizontal signal flow, much like a your other system processors are. It's very easy to see which blocks are used in the processing. I get gain reduction meters. I've got signal meters. I can even see what the parametric EQ looks like. I can click on that. It's an 8-band. You'll see along this side, I've also got automatic mic mixers. It's letting me know which AMM engines they're actually in and how they're performing inside of that AMM. So I'm getting so much information here. And what's great about some of the FPGA that we've used is that there's no resource allocation. I can have everything going full blast, full hog, and the system never blinks. It's doing the math all of the time anyways, whether we're using the process or not. So it also gives us options to, uh, so no resource allocation. We also have a fixed latency and we can run at 96K really affordably. Not very many processes are doing that, if any. So hop back over here. If I go and click on, for instance, if you're familiar with you know, the Allen and Heath consoles, this will seem very familiar. Um, just kind of, you don't want it to feel like you've jumped into some weird world. We've kept the 10-second histogram, so even if you're doing remote support or anything like that, it's easy to see uh, what's going on and how the dynamics processing has been behaving over the last 10 seconds. So, which are in a way uh, output buses for processing, but you'll see I've got those um, source selectors, which I showed you on the uh, age of 16. I can give them friendly names, friendly colors, something that makes sense to the person who's going to use it, the end user. That's really important. I've also got priority inputs for things like uh, paging, um, emergencies, evac announcements, things like that, and I can change how the whole system is being ducked when that input becomes active. You'll see I've got more APN parametric. I've got a graphic that I can toggle into another so lots of processing. But then I've also got something called ambient noise compensation, which is a way for me to tell the system to go listen to an area or an input and say, hey, in between somebody talking, maybe it's in between music or, or somebody making an announcement, see how loud it is in that area. And uh, if it's louder, if there's more people there, go ahead and raise the level of this zone. If people have left, go ahead and lower it back down because it's quieter. So it's a way for us to automate the level based on who's in the room. processing. I can do two, three, or four-way. I can change the slopes. And each band actually has its own full processing ability. So, 
weekend, but we knew we wanted to give as much power as possible, um, even though uh, it is a flexible architecture as opposed to maybe a sandbox. We get, we're getting a lot of things in return for that. Um, as I've mentioned, like the no resource allocation, it's easy to remote uh, support this. Uh, and additionally, uh, I don't have to stop audio. When I go and change routing or change my mix or change something, I don't have to disconnect it and then upload the file and reconnect it. I can do things on the fly. There's actually very few things that actually stop audio in the system. That's another really powerful factor we get because we're using RFPGA. So that's a really great overview. We've also got lots of controllers, a GPIO, and something called custom control, which is a way for us to create our own GUIs for free uh, to give people access and build exactly what they need. But other than that, if you'd like to check anything else out, uh, definitely look at allen-heath.com.